Hey everyone, welcome to MuseThemes.com here with another quick tip video for you. I want to talk about pinning. Pinning is a function in Muse here on the top toolbar that allows you to assign behavior to just about any item on your page in relation to different positions that they rest on your canvas. Now here in the toolbar you've got two different diagrams here for pinning and they accomplish two very different things. Let's talk about this first one. You can think of this first one as like the sticky pinning tool. Any pinning on these six options, you have top left, top center, and top right, and then bottom left, bottom center, and bottom right, will keep said element sticky in relation to that location regardless of any scrolling or browser size. This is probably most commonly used for page headers. Here I'm working with our frost theme, and I don't have a video put in here or anything, it's just the unaltered download of the theme, but if I do a browser preview, you can see that as I scroll down the site, our header does not move or change. And we have three elements here. We have the Frost logo, the menu itself, and then the white rectangle background, all of which are pinned to their corresponding location. Back into Muse, we can select the Frost logo and see that it has a top left pinning. And of course, menu over here has top right. And then this rectangle, which is also set to full width, is set to top center. Now it's important to remember that this pinning tool works in relation to wherever the pin itself is. So let's say instead of this setup, I gave all three of these elements a top center pinning. And we'll do another browser preview. Now it doesn't look too terribly different at first glance, but it more so comes down to how it's affected by the different browser sizes. You can see that as I shift the browser up and down, they're not staying pinned anymore in each respective corner, but rather maintaining their exact distance from the center axis, hence the top center pinning. And as I drop the browser size lower and lower, this can cause the items to be cut off slightly before reaching the next breakpoint. Because again, they're not respecting the page corners anymore, they're respecting the page's center axis. Contrasting our previous preview, we can see that each corner item keeps its exact same spacing from the corresponding corner no matter what size the browser is. So switching back to Muse, we can also see how this can be utilized with a footer as well. At the very bottom of our page here, I can select the background rectangle as well as the two text boxes, and we can see that no pinning is yet applied. But I could apply a bottom center pinning to all three elements, since they're all center positioned anyway. And give it another preview. And we can see the footer now remaining sticky as I scroll down. And as I scale the browser up and down, all three elements remain glued to that center axis, which is cool. Now back in Muse, I also want to point out up here on the breakpoint bar, you can always grab this little slider tool and scale the workspace down a bit just to see how the items are behaving in the current pinning setting. You can see that my logo and menu are bleeding off the page boundaries before reaching the 960 breakpoint, which isn't good. That's going to make for some odd appearance in your responsive site. So instead, we'll put back the original pinning, giving top left to the logo and top right to the menu. And then if we check that slider once again, we can see how everything is staying in the corners just like it should once again. Now let's quickly go over this second pinning tool. I'm going to scroll down a bit on the page here to where we have three state buttons stretching the page width neatly. This second pinning tool is not a sticky one. When using this, items will still scroll and they're still going to shift around the page. Kind of think of it as like justifying your text on a Word document. Justifying your text left, right, or center gives it a reference point in a sense to respect as the sizing changes. So in the case of these three state buttons with image fills, let me reference the last browser preview again. And we'll scroll down. We can see that as I adjust the browser size, all three of these boxes not only act responsive and maintain just the right size to fill the full width in unison, but they also remain justified on the page on the left, center, and right to make that happen without overlapping each other. So back in Muse, I can select each of these state buttons and check the pinning, and we can see them set to respect the left, center, and right respectively. And of course our breakpoint bar has the arrows pointing outward, which gives them permission to expand as wide as necessary to fill the browser, no matter how large it is. But let's say I didn't quite set this up right, and I gave all these state buttons a center justification. 
just with that little change, let's give it another preview. And we can see now we're not so groovy. Not only are they not stretching to the browser edge anymore, but they're also overlapping each other. And that's because, again, they've all been told to respect the same center axis of the page. So it's really important to keep this in mind when you're designing, and especially if you find that items are shifting around strangely in your previews. With complex layouts, you have to be very precise with your pinning settings, especially in your mobile breakpoints. Improper pinning can cause items to exceed your page edges in some browser sizes, even if it doesn't appear as such in Muse. So I hope this helps. Thanks again for joining on another quick tip video, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks again.